Here's the Drosophila COVID hack that will help us collect as many virgins as we need while minimizing the total amount of time in the lab. And the way that we want to do this is by sexing the pupae. And it's very, very easy to do once you remember that males have sex combs, females do not. So if you select dark pupae and look for sex combs, you can go ahead and um, take those pupae and distribute them among vials so that you only really need to collect once a day and you'll have as many males and virgins as possible. There are two reasons why this is very useful. Number one, when you have a combination of balancers like SCO and TM6B that might eliminate the phenotypes from one another, we often do this. And secondly, if you don't have enough time to collect as many virgins as you need from a very rare genotype. It turns out that this might be useful for COVID-19 um, re uh, reduction of time in the lab. So I'm gonna draw on the board what we're going to look for, and then we'll go to the microscope and I'll show you how to do this. If you look at pupae, they have kind of a shape in which we have the eyes on the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. And we have wings that come around in the dark pupae. In addition, we have six legs three on each side that come out of the thorax. And on males, they have sex combs. And if the pupae are dark, as long as the pupae have bristles that you can see through the pupil case, you're perfectly fine. But the males will have sex combs on their first pair of legs just about halfway down. And you'll be able to see these as very dark black marks. This works for any balancer. It works in yellow and it works in black or ebony and also in wild type animals. So this is what we're gonna go ahead and look for to distinguish males from females. All right, so the way that we wanna go about selecting the pupae is first, we wanna find a vial and dump any flying animals that may have been in there. Another nice way to check for virgins. I've recently dumped this vial, so I'm ready to isolate some of the dark pupae that are, uh, have crawled up the side of the wall. To do this, you're gonna need a bit of water to dissolve the glue that the pupae use to um, attach themselves to the side of the vial or bottle, whichever it is that you're collecting from. Sometimes I go ahead and put this on a table. Today, we're gonna be a little bit more formal and use a pe Petri dish. Something that's clean because you don't wanna contaminate your pupae with um, potentially harmful chemicals that may be on your table. You'll go ahead and take your normal uh, paintbrush and get it, get it really, really wet in the water. You can go ahead and then just take the cotton off your vial and then go in and gently release pupae from the side of the vial. So sometimes the glue is a little bit uh, tough, sometimes, and then you'll need a little bit more water but they will eventually come out. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put them on the fly pad. So I can go ahead and do this for many flies, many pupae. Sometimes they're really stuck, sometimes they're not. It just depends um, in how well they glued themselves to the side of the vial. Sometimes they come off really easily, sometimes they don't. So I can go ahead and collect I'll go ahead and collect five here, just so you can see that it goes pretty quickly. Okay. So there are the five pupae that I want. I can then maintain a wet paintbrush it's critical that the paintbrush always be wet and that the pupae remain wet you can then go ahead and you can then go ahead and then roll your pupae around and look exactly for the sex combs um, that mark the males and females so there are two virgins there's a nice beautiful male male and another virgin so that quickly i have selected um two males 
and a virgin. We will go ahead and tell you or show you what this looks like under the microscope in just a second on a second microscope. But I wanna show you how to now segregate these males or get them back into brand new vials. So again, maintaining the wet paintbrush, you can go ahead and just go ahead and pick them right back up. Pick. Sometimes I do this all at the same time. So I've picked up all three virgin females. And then what I can do is I can go ahead and I can just put them right onto the wall of the new vial, very, very gently. And then go ahead and put them in there. All right, and then here's how you would do the males if you wanted to be able to separate them a bit more. Sometimes I don't separate them when I put them on the side of the vial if they happen to be in a little clump that tends not to matter, but maybe you're really uh, worried about the density. You can go ahead and pick them up one at a time and put them on the side of the vial. And then you can go ahead and pick the other one up very, very gently and put it on a different place in the vial. And then you can just put your cotton on like normal and go ahead and write your genotype and whether it's male or female inside of the vial. Okay, This works beautifully, like I said, if you have SCO and TM6B because SCO uh, deletes the extra humoral hairs that you might see in TM6B. So selecting tubby larvae and then looking for SCO a little bit later is very advantageous. So this technique works beautiful for that. And like I said, if you have a very rare genotype for which you're looking for virgin females, this also works beautifully by separating all of the females. And now in the time of COVID, as we have limited time in the lab, this is a beautiful way, if, especially if you keep your animals at 18 or your pupae at 18, um, to um, be able to maintain uh, a steady stream of virgin collection without missing very much. So I can usually do this once a day and I collect nearly every single virgin um, that is available. All right, now that we've uh, taken a look at how to get the larvae into and or the pupae in, uh, out of the vial and then back into new vials. Here's what it actually looks like when you're looking under the microscope. Here we have set up on the fly pad, and I must uh, tell you there's no reason to use CO2 at this point, but here we have a collection of pupae on the fly pad for which you would be evaluating and moving them around. We've set up this um, very basic camera so that you can see we have a male here on the top and a female here on the bottom. And what you're looking for is the sex combs right here that I'm pointing to on the male. And you can see that they are missing from the female down there. So these um, pupae are facing here so that the head of each pupae is here. And then you can see each one of the uh, pairs of legs and then the dark wings that I drew on the board. Again, you're just simply looking for these two little dark marks and those represent the sex combs on the male that are missing from this female. All right, I hope that helps. I hope that solves a lot of our problems and reduces the time in the lab while elevating the number of crosses that we're still able to do. Thanks.